to be a new series that I'm going to start for a little bit. Um, mostly talking about Proxmox and containers, so LVM specifically in Proxmox. Alright, so this is the system I'll be working with for now. This might change um, as we go along, right? I am running an older version of Proxmox here, which is 7.4-17. Uh, the system is well enough and we'll just be playing around with it, um, going through installing different containers, uh, just to go through how the installation process will work and if there's anything to note. Right. So the main repo that I'll be referencing would be uh, this repo. I will hopefully remember to link it in the description. Um, there is a bunch of different uh, typically used containers. Right. Very helpful repo. Uh, we'll just go through, look at it, and maybe look at how things are meshed together and things like that. Right. Um, yep. So, I probably will not do every single one. There is quite a lot here. Uh, I'll just pick and choose those that um, seem interesting enough or things that I actually use, right? So, uh, one of the most common ones to install, right, would be Home Assistant. So, if you look at uh, these four, let me just zoom right in, right? Home Assistant, uh, because Home Assistant has a bunch of different um, components, right? And sometimes if you don't want to go through the whole hassle of figuring out how to install all the different components, you can just pick, right? So uh, you can go the Raspberry Pi version, right? Or you can just do Home Assistant OS, Home Assistant Core, uh, Container, uh, Podman, right? So Portman as the base for Home Assistant. If you just read this, yeah, use Portman uh, as a container technology to install Home Assistant. Uh, we won't be doing that. Let's just do Home Assistant OS. Oh no, this is VM. Okay, let's not do the VM version. Let's do Home Assistant container Alexi. Okay, we can do this, or if we do core. Okay, you know what? Yep, let's do core, and then we will see if we want to deploy a different one. Right? Okay, so just copy this. Alright, so this basically... If you really want to know you can go follow the link uh he'll show you what the script runs i've vetted through most of it before and for the most part there's nothing wrong right so come back to proxmox all right and we drop into a shell all right so we want to drop into the host shell we're not in a vm right now and i'll just zoom right in and close this right so yeah, okay. So we paste the script that we grabbed, right? And we hit enter. So it will prompt you. Do you want to create? Uh, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so it tells you, you know, it checks what version of Proxmox you're running, right? Uh, and then tells me don't make the Debian 12 LXEs, right? And then the default is Debian 12. So we click OK, right? Uh, so we know the default is Debian 12 and we're on Debian 11. So basically we cannot say yes here. We just go to advance. Most of the time you do it advance anyways. Or I would do advance, right? So we come here, we say Debian, yes. But we don't select 12, right? I'm pressing space to select, enter to go to the next page. Uh, for now I don't care about USB pass-through, so you can set it as privileged to set it up, then disable it in the settings. Um, maybe I'll do that and I'll show you. So I set it as privileged, so that at least USB pass through is set up. I set a password, so let's just give it password. Alright, I'm gonna destroy this anyways. Um, Alright, 
give it an ID, so let's just give it 8000, give it a name, so let's just call it YouTube, right, uh, Alexi. Okay, and then um, some amount of space. Once again, this can be quite easily adjusted. Uh, two cores, it's fine. One gig, that's fine. Um, so if you have different network tab adapters, you would define it here, right? Uh, all this is fine. So this is something that was recently added, whether you have uh, an app cache. Right now, I don't, so that's fine. Uh, I will disable IPv6. Oh, this is still default. If you're using VLANs, you will define it here. Uh, one thing to know about this script is that it needs internet access. So if there's no internet, then this will not work. All right? Whether we want to enable root SSH, let's just say no for now. Uh, verbose also no. Okay, and we're good. So this gives you a rundown. What you're going to do? Choose what we're going to install right and then um, I'm just gonna install this on let's just do it here air yeah I guess it doesn't matter let's do it here okay so you pick where do you want your template template to be stored and where do you want a container to be stored the template I guess deleted any of the day so it doesn't really matter for the most part and then this will just run through the installation script. Okay, that took a very long while, about two hours. And if you look at this, it's like there were certain steps that said, be patient. Uh, I've never installed this specific image before, but it took a long while. So if I move, copy that IP in, we get to our uh, home assistant learning page right so let's just give it a name let's just call it youtube yeah password as password and there we go um let's just skip country let's just skip this as well can i no i can't um malaysia Right, I just want to go through and just look at exactly which version of um, home system we have. It's been quite a while since I've had to do this. And why does it seem stuck? Hmm. Why? I reloaded the page. I don't know why it's stuck. Um, Nope, I don't want to give them anything. And finish, right? So if we look at developer tools, I think there was um I don't remember. Well, I'll probably try installing the other ones at some point. And then we'll see whether uh Oh, right, okay, that was something that I was supposed to do, which I believe I've not done, right? So, if you look here, and I believe I did this, um, we have to config. So, let's copy this, 
come over to Proxbox. Uh, let's look at 8,000. Should be. Nope. Okay, here we go. So I'll come here, look at console, login ID will be root, uh, password was whatever we set, so I use password. Alright, so then we can nano whatever it was, alright. Mm, no. Did that not say that was the config? Okay, I suppose it's inside this path. Right, so let's just list what is in there. Yep, okay, so we can nano slash config. But let's not nano, let's cat it first. Alright, let's see what's in there. Um, okay, I don't think we actually need to do anything. So come back here is saying we need to restart so let's just restart all right here we look at the vm you know container it should restart or maybe it's only a service restarting i i don't know Okay, looking at this, uh, I think that this is not the full version that we care about because we don't have the supervisor tools. So overall, uh, it seems that uh, this does work but probably not to the extent that we want okay so this is how to install add on core we'll probably try doing um, podman uh, I am interested not in working as ZFS okay that's something to note I am interested to see how this will configure because using um, Docker. I see Portainer here, and if it deploys Portainer as well, that seems like quite overkill. Yeah, that, it does deploy Portainer as well. It does seem quite overkill. Or maybe you get a choice. So maybe we'll try this as well, just to have the full set, right? However, I'm also not all that sure. I'm pretty sure I've deployed Home Assistant as a container. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, no, this is a VM, right? So maybe we'll try uh, uh, nested virtualization or actually nested containerization in another video. So another thing to show here, right, is we talked about how we can resize, uh, reallocate memory and all that. So we'll start a resource here. You can always just change this. Right? So if you want to give it more RAM to 48, 2 gigs of RAM. Just click OK and it's done. Alright, all this is on the fly, you can change it. Here you can expand the disk quite easily, right? Resize. Expanding is no issue, shrinking is. So easier to just start from a smaller size and then as you need it, just you know, say oh I want to give it another 2 gig. Right, click OK, blah 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 and it's done now it's 10 right so really easy networking right like i said to set up you need internet access but once it's set up you can come in here and you can change all of this right you can see on the static ip uh, put in your vlan or whatever right uh dns options all, all this is here so dns um by default just uses uh, the dns name all right uh, options is over here and then we talked about uh, 
setting uh, pri uh, root privileges first, right? You can now come in here and say, okay, now I don't want you to have root. Uh, I think we're gonna shut down the the container first, but yeah, you can just say this to yes to unprivileged. Then uh, you know there is just less attack surface area. So you can set up backup, snapshots, everything here, right? Uh, the other thing we can do is here, right? This is where you can change the name of the container, right? So this host name is the container's host name. Right, so that's that. Thank you for watching. And see you in the next one.